as a nation, we are about to be hit with a a generation of addicted, you know, messes, right. and that destroys the economy. It destroys, you know, there's the health system. It's just the whole thing gets involved. Everything. Right. It's, uh, right. So it's just horrifying. So if you love your kids, uh, you know, start doing something well, now. Well, yeah, or, you know, if, you're in, if you live in Nevada and they don't happen to have a sober high school, if you, look, if you are really interested in this and you just Google recovery high schools, there is an association of recovery high schools. Uh, I prefer calling it sober high school, but they mm-hmm. like recovery, so whatever. But um, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. And, uh, and there are lists of, you know, the 40, 35, 40 that are across the United States uh, if you're interested in, in helping them out or in getting more information. Right. I would highly recommend it. Yeah. I would love to keep talking and talking, but we have a lot of callers on hold. Oh, we do? How exciting. <laughs> I think okay, you're good. popular for some reason, so maybe we oh, should good. start taking them. <laughs> They're probably furious at you. They're like, shut up. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. All <laughs> right, first yeah, let's up, go. I, <laughs> first up, we have Chris from Buffalo, New York. Speaking of New York. Hi, Chris. Hi, Kristen. How are you? Hi. How are you, honey? I'm okay. Um, first of all, obviously, I'm going to say I love your book. Like many Good. people, sat down, read it I'm one so night. Glad. I've actually yeah. read it twice and then heard it on audio. So. You're kidding! No. That's <laughs> so cool. I'm not gonna I'm glad lie. It. I did. I'm, glad. I'm not gonna lie. I did go to Barnes and Noble the other day just to check out the new forward. You did. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> but oh I God, feel like I contributed. You did. And you also, know what? Buying three books or whatever, or buying the audio and then that buys you a pass. Well, Kristen, we have also spoke on Twitter many times, and I was part of the group who purchased books for other people. Wait, oh, wait, what's your Twitter name, or do you not want to say it? Cuz Tweets. Huh? Cuz, K-U-Z, Tweets. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, hi. So you were part uh, of what? Remember um, the uh, effort to buy a copy of Guts for somebody who um, maybe couldn't afford it or couldn't have Right, and then that went it. down in flames because some kids, like... Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. able to okay. get a book out, though, so Good. I'm happy about oh, that. Oh, you were? Thank yeah. you. So um, I have a couple of questions for you. Okay, um, well, hurry up, little... we got a lot of people. I will. might be a little weird. Do you believe there's such thing as, uh, for lack of a better word, accidental addiction or um, dependency? You mean, uh, you mean sort of circumstantial like, well, I'll, I use, I'll use my, my own example. Yeah. Um, I, I was yeah. in a bad accident um, uh-huh. and have had many surgeries due to it. So obviously yeah. with surgery comes the medication. Yeah. Um, so never any history in my past, nothing actually against it, um, and have caught myself a couple of times wondering if I'm falling to it. You know, like in your uh-huh. book where you're like, oh, hey, did you see that squirrel? And then you yes. Yeah, Kind of like yeah 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 pop you know uh, well wait let me ask you this do you take as directed um yes but there are times um because I do have genuine pain and have found yeah. myself maybe a little bit more reliant than mm-hmm. I should be okay well look I, again I, and I state say this very clearly I am certainly no addiction expert by any means or right. doctor so please take this with a grain of salt. Uh, I don't think there is such a thing as accidental addiction. I mean, I think certainly if you get a lot of surgeries or whatever, you can become reliant on painkillers. You know, you can become addicted to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, without even thinking about it. And uh, so I guess my, um, I think that putting the word accidental on it makes it more like, whoop. You know, this is right. more like, you know, you should talk to your doctor about what's going on because you don't want to end up, you know, 20 years from now right. a junkie, you know, under a bridge. You, you know, this, and I certainly, you know, relate, I get that you're in pain and I get you need something, but I think you need to figure, maybe re-look at your, um, 
at your at well, how you're navigating it. Because it's exactly, and that was part of my second question as well. Uh-huh. Do you feel as though somebody who might be in that situation, um, who others may not know about it, do you feel that they should kind of um, speak to someone or do something about it without necessarily speaking to family or friends first, or should you have that conversation and then let them be there with you? Ah, uh, wow. Well, if you, if you, if, let's say it's, we're talking about someone named Tim. So if Tim feels like he could get some support from family or friends, then yes. And there's no shame in it. It's like, look, this is getting complicated for me. I've been taking this stuff for a long time because I have to, and now I find myself be feeling weird about it and maybe taking too much or whatever. So I need your support with this or whatever. And um, and so I don't know. And then I would certainly talk to a doctor, absolutely. But if you have a if, if Tim, sorry, if Tim has a good uh, you know connection with a, a friend, a couple friends, or their family, I would definitely share that information. If you don't feel like they'll be like, oh, my God, you're an addict. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm sure there would be support. It's just kind of, a, like a better word, letting out the secret. Yes. Look, let me tell you something, hon. If you've read my book this many times it, and it affected you so much, there's something something's going on. Right. You know, you're relating to it on a level that, uh, you, you know that, that you should look at. I think I, again. I wish I would. I wish I had like you know. I was from Harvard taught. I don't know, but you know my advice is share it, talk about it. You know you seem really open. You seem cool. You seem like a really smart guy. You have excellent taste in books. So <laughs> I would really try to become a little more open about it because you can all of a sudden look like your whole life becomes secretive when you're trying to protect that, you know? Yeah, I know. I definitely agree. And like I said, I wanted to ask you about that because in a way, I guess I kind of feel like it could be that. So that right there is um, a red flag for me. I think so. I mean, I, I think so. It's enough. It's enough that I, you know, if I was your buddy, I would say, you know what, let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's talk to somebody about it and, you know, talk to a doctor about you know, if there's any other way to navigate it or a smarter way or, you know, a pain patch for I don't know what your issue is, you know, but sort of a way so that you aren't, so you don't have that obsession of like, oh, my God, I have seven pills, so I, let me take four, uh, maybe three, uh, how about six, you know. I mean, I just know what that is. It's crazy. Right. No, I understand. And, listen, thank you so much for your advice. That's exactly what oh, I needed. I thank don't you want for your to... support hold up other people that have been waiting patiently, such as myself. But I, I, you know, um, but I think you just, I think you probably helped a lot of people by asking those questions. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. And um, I wish you all the best of luck with the school. I wish hard. there was a way I can All right, shut up contribute. now. So I <laughs> Bye, Kristen. Let me know on Twitter how you're doing, okay? I will. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you, Chris. Have a good night. All right, let's see. Next up, we have Michael in Florida. Michael, you're on with Kristen. Hey, Kristen. How are you? Hi, Michael. Is this Michael, Michael? <laughs> yes, this is Michael, Michael. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm perfect. How are you? Good. So awesome. what's your question, doll? Um, hey, I want to ask you, Um, do you want to tell me about your Shorty Award nomination? Do I want to what? Do you want to tell me about your Shorty Award nomination? Tell you about it, or t- you mean t- talk about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, about yeah. It. I mean, I'd love to. I mean, it's. I, I really, really want to get this. You know, the short. You guys know about the Shorty Awards. It's like it's the Oscars for Twitter, which I don't know what that. But you know, it's these awards they give out for Twitter, and I really want Guts, uh, or you know, me as the author of Guts to win. So if you have a Twitter account, just nominate me. Uh, as an author, and the reason I care so much, and I don't care about awards or anything, is I really, really want uh, more people, again, to, to be turned on to Guts and to know what Guts is and to read Guts. So, thank you. Absolutely agree. Hey, <laughs> I think it should be in any household, you know, like a Bible, almost. It's great. I can't, great I can't hear you, doll. I said I think it should be in any household. Oh, Almost I used to, like the, right by the right by the bath, right like right by the loo. 
<laughs> no, but you know what? I, I purposely wrote it. I honestly, I purposely wrote it. It is linear each chapter, you know. But I purposely wrote it so that you could read any chapter separately if you wanted. You know, like there's okay. a beginning and a middle and an end to every chapter. It's sort of like a short story per chapter. Absolutely. Hey, well, ask thank me about, you, darling. Yeah. Ask me about my favorite part in the book. Ask Ask you. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the book? Well, that's funny that you should ask. My favorite part was right at the end um, where you say um, you will never be quiet again. And oh, never. Quiet. I know. I'll, I'll never again will I believe in anybody else's reality. Right. That one? So, no, it's... Um, oh, yeah, I know what you're about... talking about. After the agent, the agent, this agent comes up to me at a party and says, you know, you shouldn't tell people you're sober. And I was like, why? I'm writing a book about it. And he said, it just makes people uncomfortable. And so I was furious. And then I decided afterwards, uh, I'm never going to shut up and I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite never part. Never care, never shut up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks. Bye, sweetheart. Thank you, okay. Michael. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Scott in PA. You're only Kristen. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Is this, uh, did you say your name is Scott? Yes, this is Scott Faithful. Oh, that's my... Oh, Scott! Yes. <laughs> I love you, Scott. How are you? I love you, too. Good. How are you? Excellent. So what's Good. your question? Um, I have a couple, just a couple quick questions. Um, following you on Twitter and following you on Facebook, um, you know, you share a lot of things uh-huh. that people message yeah. to you and the way that uh, your book has affected them. Um, they share, you know, how how they feel. How does that make you feel that you've that people have gone to get help? They've, you know, are seeking treatment yeah. because of reading your book. It. Honestly, it's been the most it's the most humbling thing that's ever happened to me in my life. It's like mm-hmm. I am I say in the foreword, I'm humbled to my knees at what has happened. Instead of being becoming like, Oh, how great my it's like really I just feel so honored that that mm-hmm. it's done this and that just I just said the truth. And I think that's what is so important about lifting the shame and that's why I tried to do this book because I didn't have to I wasn't arrested or whatever and so I was like I hope this lifts the shame for people and it really has I mean it's enough so that people are like talking about it and getting the help they need there's a long way to go I'm not saying it's fixed but you know people have now are able to ask questions like the gentleman just before of like is there accidental addiction you know things like that that like maybe they wouldn't have felt comfortable asking before and and that makes me so happy and that of course the people who who've gotten help and so are sober because of it it just blows me away it it is it's really i mean it's really wonderful and i think unlike a lot of celebrities you know it I don't know of any press, you know, about what you went through. Um, no, I wasn't. I didn't have. There was. Yeah, no one knew. No, and I think, and I think that's a good thing uh, because it seems, you know, when you read your book and then you know, getting to know you and communicating with you, it's like you know, your book is straight from you. You, you know, you actually wrote it, and yeah. it just seems that when other celebrities, you know, write books about it, they're they're doing it to kind of market themselves, advance their career, and. Right. You know, try, right. try to turn something that that was personal into you know some kind of thing, right. and you haven't Which done that. Not, yes, that is not what I wanted to do, and, and no, I really, really wanted to look. There is, you know, you know, my mother is not thrilled. Uh, she thinks it's too personal and private. But there's a point when you go, okay, there's personal, there's privacy, right? Which I'm very private. You know, I don't like run around. You know, you don't see me, you know, you know, boinking every Hollywood guy. You know, I'm very, like, private about my private life. But this, I, you know, I just felt like if I don't talk about it, I, I, I just didn't want the shame anymore. I just don't think there's any reason to be embarrassed by being an addict. I just don't. 
And yeah. so, and I'm sick of being in church basements, and I'm sick of, you know, scurrying around like we've done something wrong when mm-hmm. we haven't. 